Believe it or not, there's now a container glut. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, one of those posts covering finance and properties with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, I found this article today, which I found quite amazing, really, saying there's now a container glut, which signals the end of the sea shipping boom time. Ports worldwide are clogged with empty shipping containers as recession and a post-pandemic change in consumer behaviour takes effect. Shipping container platform Container Exchange says recession and excess inventory have seen shipping prices tumble and the ports are clogged with empty containers as they readjust to the economic slowdown and a post-pandemic changing customer behaviour, says a company whose digital platform helps match container supply with demand. There is just not enough depot space to accommodate all the containers, said Container Exchange CEO Christian Rieloff. Rieloff's blamed a downward shift in consumption appetites for the glut, which he says has also been compounded by an excess of inventory among retailers. He says the peak holiday season of good shipments technically did not happen this year because retailers are cautious about the high level of inventory they have on hand. Regarding the problem of excess inventory, Nike recently admitted that it was following a policy of aggressive markdowns to clear apparel inventories. And the company blames the inventory glut on late deliveries over the past two seasons and earlier ordering by retailers due to strong demand and unpredictable delivery timelines. It's a similar story with many other leading US retailers, including Walmart, Target, Gap and Coles, with companies trying to clear a glut of merchandise piling up in stores and warehouses. Container Exchange added that normalisation of container turnaround times means cargo is running smoothly again and companies are readjusting to more efficient turnaround times in ocean freight delivery. The company says that to combat full and overflowing depots, ports such as the Port of Houston have been levying fees for empty containers sitting in terminals for more than seven days. Many of the containers sitting in ports are empty, the company says, adding that they can be left sitting around for weeks on end. This clogs up ports and impacts global supply chains because of the knock-on effect it has on container repositioning and movements. And in related news, Hellenic Shipping News reports that a key shipping container index points to a sharp fall in sea shipping prices, a sure sign the industry is normalising. It says the Drury Composite World Container Index has fallen to 2,773 per 30-foot container. That's 73% lower than the peak rate in September 2021. The index also shows so-called blank sailings are on the rise as the year's biggest spending period approaches. A blank sailing happens when a shipping company decides to skip a port or an entire leg of its schedule to manage changes in demand and capacity. Dewey shows that for the period, later on November to early December, 14% of sailings have been cancelled across major containing shipping routes. This chimes with a quarter three result, warning from major shipping group Maersk that freight rates have peaked amid easing supply chain congestion and falling demand. And the company told investors to expect lower ocean shipping profits. At the height of the shipping price boom, Merck's reported expected to earn a further 1.8 billion US dollars for the 2022 quarter four period, taking its projected total for the year to $19.8 billion. This unfathomably large sum would place Merck in 118th position in the GDP lead table between Georgia at $18.89 billion and Mali at $19.33 billion. And a recent container exchange survey showed that nearly 60% of the 200 freight forwarders, traders and shippers it canvassed say they are facing a steep fall off in demand for containers in the face of geopolitical, economic and political turmoil. We know already that the market is bearish on consumer demand because of multiple factors like recessionary fears and inflationary risks, a container exchange spokesperson told CNBC. So, of course, there is a significant dent in consumer demand, which then leads to less demand for freight and cargo and therefore a proportionate dent in container demand globally. Shippers are giving containers a way to reduce crowding at depots, while many have resorted to to blank sailings container exchange added. So here you go, from feast to famine. And of course, it means that the global supply chains are once again being disrupted, but in a different way this time, 
But I suppose it is good news that the cost of shipping is coming down to more normal levels. I wonder whether we'll see reductions in price as a result. Hmm, I don't think so. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.